Okay. Looks like everyone's at least connected via audio. So thank you all for joining us. If this is your first time or if you're coming back, welcome back. Uh, this is our second working group where we will focus on our faculty members today. Um, as a reminder, so this is a working group where I'm absolutely encouraging everyone to kind of participate and to put in your two cents now. Um, otherwise, we will just be recreating things that <laughs> perhaps you don't find useful. So let's let's um, all work together here to to get to Femoral 2.0. Um, so just a quick reminder of what we hope to cover and how these working groups will, will typically unfold. Uh, we go through how Femoral 1.0 currently exists, and then um, We'll, we'll hit on each different kind of field and profile uh, captions and, and, and see what you like, what you think is missing and how Femoral 2.0 can look a bit better. And if at the end of this session, we decide we need to focus additionally on the faculty's profile, we can do next week can be a whole a second version of this session, or if we're ready to move on to perhaps a different part of Femoral, we can do that as well. Um, so. Uh, let's move on to a moral 1.0 as we know it. So um, again, a reminder for if anyone is not quite aware, Femoral 1.0, it's an administrative tool um, that primarily our admin staff uses, but of course the faculty and residents um, have a smaller version of it um, that we can hopefully expand upon. So Femoral 1.0, we kind of uh, refer to things as preceptors, but I think we're gonna be looking at changing the terminology so that it encompasses all of our faculty members and not just those that are supervising residents. And so when we are in the administrative portal, um, you, this section here is how we search for our current preceptors. Um, as I said, I think that would happen to be now searching for all faculty members. And so maybe that does change some of these filtering options um, as you're searching for someone, but maybe they just stay the, the same. I mean, and this is where I'm looking to kind of you guys is, if we are now searching our entire faculty, are these still the fields you need to be able to pull up a person? Um, so that's a very good question, Marissa. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, um, my instinct says no, it doesn't need to say primary preceptor, it can just say faculty. Um, but um, because I think when we're doing a search, that's what we're looking for. Normally, when, when Andrea and I use it, so there are different ways on how we're all using it. Um, when we use it, we're basically trying to determine if, you know, someone is a faculty member. Mm -hmm. So we put their first name or their last name in to see if they have an appointment with us. So that's how we're seeing it. And that's how we're using it. Um, but maybe some Others um, use it differently. Kim, what do you think? Um, I was going to say, for, for us, um, the primary preceptor would be good just if we need a list yeah. of um, historically who have they been a preceptor for, um, are they currently active, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes we, that would be a quick, it just, mm -hmm. I haven't used it um super frequently i just find that sometimes it, it gets a little clunky to try and get certain information out um so for us anyways on the on the pgy1 pgy2 kind of resident i, I think for us it'd be useful to, to have that because it'd be nice to have a database like okay this person has seen six residents over x amount of time versus a new preceptor, which might need a little bit more support, let's say, so we could generate a list based on that. So Kim, when you use it, um, you use it to determine if the faculty member has been a preceptor, right? So you're sort of looking for the historical data on them? Yeah, we for someone okay. it could be like, um, I, I don't have a resident in, in mind, but we do use mm -hmm. it to, to know, you know, okay. to, to see who... Um, we also tend to use the preceptor portal to, um, and I guess we could, that's the thing. Sometimes I'll go actually in the user tab instead of preceptor, because I'll get different information from mm. that. And I know we're not kind of there yet, but um, yeah, I kind of flip between the two. 
Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, so then it sounds like you, whether they are active faculty members or not, you need to be able to pull up anyone that has ever been a faculty member here. Right. Okay. And so when you uh, have, yes, sorry. Or, or a preceptor, right? Kim, right. we're trying to see if, um, if a faculty member has done any teaching. That's how primarily you're using it. Yeah, and, and again, it's it's also listed, it's matched up to the resident. Yeah. So if we, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. So when you add, add them in the resident portal, it automatically um, populates this piece as well, right? Well, yeah. that's the thing. Sometimes it does, and then sometimes I have to go into mm. the user to kind of um, verify certain things. Um, we sometimes have residents that become preceptors as well. So yes. sometimes I pull them in the user because they, they don't always appear. So anyways, it, it's just, it'd be nice to have it in the preceptor section so that when we pull it, we can know they have supervised this person or are currently yeah. supervising whoever. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So Marissa, I mean, mm -hmm. you're just looking to find out today if you can basically duplicate what we have for this stage, right? And, yeah. and this is not a conversation about any additions and, and all of that, right? Uh, or it's, and I hate to give a yes, no answer. <laughs> I know. But like I know. The, the initial stage is we have to just be able to say we can close off for moral and now we're yeah. working in. 2. Okay, 0. that's fine. And so, so if there are things we need to consider that don't exist at this stage, yeah, let's let's hear them now. But knowing that ultimate our first step is just to be able to replicate right. the okay. necessary information that's here. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yes, Louise, I see your hand. Um, often Claire will ask, when when did this person first get their academic appointment? Mm -hmm. And as it is right now, it will put the recent academic appointment, not the very first one that they got. Okay. Sometimes she wants to compare how long have they been a lecturer before they became an assistant. Okay. So I'm gonna but skip I, the, yeah, go ahead. Let's I go. think Louise, the start date is there, but you just yeah. have to say it is there. It's not always, it's, it doesn't always capture the very first one. Yeah. No, but that may be because it wasn't added on, but there is a field there, right? So yeah. someone comes in as a lecturer, that's their start date. When they get promoted, then there's another field that opens up that says now they're assistant and we put in the start date for that. Yeah. Right. So and then if they become associate, then there's a third row and then to full, there is a fourth one. Mm -hmm. So you have to sort of go back to, you know, when they actually the lecture status. And yes, it is. You're absolutely correct, Louise. It's incomplete and not accurate often. But that's more of a of a of an administrative glitch in it, too. Right. Because it yeah. hasn't been updated um, as frequently as it needed to over the years. So mm -hmm. but yes. Yeah, so I think we're we're we skipped ahead here just a little bit in the the PowerPoint, but we can. Um, I think we're talking about right here, right? The career progression and academic ranking. Once yeah, you exactly. found the, yeah. the faculty member so, you're talking about, okay. that's right. And, and I find that sometimes the start date, uh, end date, wasn't like even though it was put in, it wasn't always catching. It was like it was a, a minor glitch. Uh, yes, because you oh. have to currently, you'd have to insert the information you have to and save yes. and save, save the yeah. form. If you just inserted and did not save the form, then, then it yes, doesn't, it doesn't yeah. go right. Yep. So those are the kind of improvements where it will be yes. making in this next round. That Mar if you've, Marissa, I found yeah. that this. Um, sorry, I'm jumping yeah. ahead. Um, this one where we had the documentation field. Yes. Yeah. I found this to be not useful and I would just like it to be removed. Okay. Um, because it just, it just, it was, 
Yeah, just well, more work for the sake of it doing the work. more right? work there. Yes, that just meant that the faculty affairs coordinator would then have to come in and, you know, update all of these fields. Yeah. And those are those are um, ever changing. <laughs> mm -hmm. If Andrea, for example, puts in that I don't have their CV, well, 10 minutes later, she can't get their CV and then she'll have to go back and update it. So right. it's not really relevant to um, the work that we're doing. So I think we can basically get rid of that. And Eric, I see your wish list and I'm in complete agreement with all of it oh. in the chat. <laughs> Oh, good. I was, I'm going to, I'm sorry. I, I, I know Kendra is monitoring the chat. I myself have not yeah. seen the questions yet, but I'm going to be sure that we address any of them either at the end yes. of this session or offline. Um, anyway, so. I've, I've probably spoken too much anyway. No, so no, be, this is I'll exactly what it's supposed <laughs> to be. And others, please feel free to pipe in as well if you, yeah. if you have suggestions. But I do think we agree though, that there needs to be somewhere the quick being ability to to determine if they do have an active appointment, right? Yes, but this is just, um, this section was just created to monitor, you know, where they are, the progression of the um, process, and it's not necessary for it to be in here. Um, okay. It's because it's so fluid and it changes daily that the coordinator will not have an opportunity to go back. And really, you have to ask the question, you know, why are we, who is the audience for this? If anybody really needs an answer to any of these questions, yes. they would just contact Andrea. Right. Um, it's often that Dr. Liddy wants to know something and then she just goes directly to, um, to Andrea. Okay. Uh, and so it's not necessary. So I would like to have all of that um, taken out. Okay. Um, if I can, I'll jump back here maybe. Okay, so that we referred the search functions, which again, we can kind of, go back in iterations once we've got the new kind of Femoral 2.0 there. And if you want new searching right. abilities, we can work on it that way. Um, so um, I know Eric is, Eric is, Eric, would you like to speak to, um, you know, we talked about this, I think it was about a year or so ago, maybe even longer with um, Dr. Hogg. We had a conversation and with Jeff about, you know, creating a talent management system. Really, you know, one of those one one stop shops, um, and that is that is our dream. That is where we would like to get to. Um, at this point, you know, we're going to take what we have here and replicate it, of course. But down the road, what we would like to have is, you know, one stop shop where you know you can just go in, and it's going to be tied to everything from the awards they have received, where they are, you know, their promotions, performance reviews, um, their academic academic areas of focus, what their interests are, um, if they are a mentor, if they are being mentored, all of their CPD, you know, their, their, you know, how many credits they have. So that's where we would like to get to. Mm -hmm. um, so that is our wish list um, for 2.0. Okay. okay. And Eric, would you like to say something and have faculty add their interests? That's right. Yeah. No, uh, I think yeah. this, I, I, can you hear me okay? Yes. I, I know yes. sometimes my, yes. I was sitting with Rosalind and uh, we were in another room and uh, <laughs> I realized I should probably just come over because I feel bad about uh, making her go on camera if, if um, she doesn't want to. So this is really nice. Thank you for bringing, bringing us into this. Um, yeah, and I think, like I said, just to summarize what I put in the chat box, I see it basically covered it all, but it, that notion that there was always this vision that the faculty portal would someday be used by the faculty. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was never really kind of realized. It was more of an admin database. And so there's a lot of manual effort that administrators have to do to kind of, uh, um, you know, update people's addresses and their phone numbers or their email changes, or they change from one hospital to another. And it'd be so nice if they could actually just go in there and fix that and change that themselves as a user. Uh, and of course that also brings in, the possibility for them to sort of keep track of, you know, when, when, when we, they've attended a certain event, you know, we, we get them the orientation. We can like, like Louise was saying, what year did they start in the department? What year did they get this promotion? What year? And we, you know, just all of that stuff that we could probably run reports on. And if they can tr put down their interests, mm -hmm. like at the last, one of the last big meetings, there was something about the chair was asking, could we, you know, say this conference, they need a family physician who has an interest in, in uh, women's health. 
you know, how could we pull up a list of 10 people of an interest in women's health and say, here's 10 people you might want to invite to be on that committee, but it's really, really manual right now. We'd have to, um, you know, buy a bunch of Prozac or something for Louise and, and have her go, through, you know, and Andrea go through all of the old UTPC and so well, this looks great. Yeah. So when you're talking about interests, would you be able, like, is it something where like a list could be created of what those categories of interests are so that a faculty member could go into their own portal and say these click the ones they're interested in yeah okay so that yes. would be the kind of information that would you could be. give us so. yeah and kind of mm -hmm. I, I said aligned with the curriculum so we don't have to reinvent the wheel but if there's right. like i like palliative care i like women's yeah. health like adults care of care of the elderly and then that's right because then like i know it like we were just at a meeting and uh curriculum meeting and i apologize for people i had to step out of that meeting mm -hmm. to um you know, Denise was saying, oh, well, we need some people to review this part of the curriculum. Well, if we had 10 people who are interested in care of children or, you know, we could just say maybe they should be on the committee. Like they've already self-identified as an interest. And that idea of self-identification, I think, is so important for everything like gender. And I know that's all already probably in the works to make sure that we have, a, you know, pronouns and things like that, that we, you know, when we first invented mm -hmm. this 10 years ago, uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't think we actually thought enough about stuff like that that's kind of become of late you know making sure that people can define their own pronouns and and uh yeah they're, they're, they're that's their legal name but they might have a preferred name or somebody you know like uh, as i as i deal with as i have family members who i realize this is one of those complex and evolving situations with um self-definition and self-identity is always so complex so yeah 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 cool i'll stop yeah, talking okay. um <laughs> and and so really what, you know, I've, um, I haven't had much experience with the um, ECV and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very clunky tool, of course, but really where we want to get to, I think, is we will have to figure out a way to give faculty members access. Um, I think that would be important that they should be able to go in and see what's there. I mean, we had someone ask us recently, you know, do you, do you know what I have attended, you know, and we have to go back and look up, you know, 2013 and go through our P drive and all of it and try and pull that information. So, you know, we would definitely then have, you know, them have access, maybe using their U Ottawa credentials and all of that. But I think um, sort of like what we've learned through the ECV, um, we, they will need administrative support. So we will, you know, we can, track a lot of the information and we should have the ability to also go in and and update it and add to it mm -hmm. and then they can do as well so i think i see it more as as one of these shared um portals than just mm -hmm. you know an admin tool or a faculty tool i think both both right. pieces would have to work together and then eric i don't know if you recall but you know when we first had this conversation a couple of years ago there was also you know the issue of privacy and you know how would you know, and, and stuff like that, Marissa, if you've, you've had conversations about that on your end, like, how are we um, sorting through that, you know, how faculty would have all this information stored somewhere and mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure Natalia has thoughts on that because I know security, oh, yes. security is her, yes. is her kind of first area of expertise. So yeah, I know that's definitely on her radar. Um, okay, good. Yeah, I, and you know, it's funny, I'll just skip kind of towards the end here again. We'll keep this a bit informal, but yeah, currently this is what faculty members see when they sign into the portal for anyone that's You're not right. aware. And mm. yeah, I mean, sure, Field Notes, Susan 145 links are, are also components that they use and we'll get those in our future working groups but wouldn't it be nice to see like more of a welcome page that mm -hmm. <laughs> that they see their demographic information as we see the same information so that yeah. it's a two-way kind of communication of yeah go ahead Eric. i'm just trying to figure out how to raise my oh. hand okay there i did it <laughs> there, i'll even i'll even match it like i'll give myself a high five okay <laughs> there okay no i uh, that is really good and i think yeah, that, that gets to, I think, the vision we also had, just like for the residents, for the faculty to be able to have a bit of a dashboard that would show, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like you say, if you go to 145, it'll show you your pending stuff. But, you know, there's data that comes out of the field note system that 
tells a lot about me. Like mm -hmm. I have done this many field notes, or I, you know, I haven't done one in this long. Like it, that sort of um, like a like a speedometer, you know, for how you're doing, how many of these, what kind of areas are you doing? It helps me reflect on my behaviors as a faculty member. So it doesn't have to be a you know front and center, but I I love that idea that you log in and you've got your you know, you haven't attended a thing in a while, or, you know, you're, you know, you, you can, like, I, I think it's, it's just, it helps give some feedback to people. And the nice thing about these little things is they're like metrics that, you know, we we're collecting mm -hmm. all this data anyway, it's just, we don't do anything with it to yeah. give it back to the person who it matters most to, which is the faculty member or the resident is just really, really nice. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I use the, I use this version a lot, so like for, in this end where I kind of go in. So if you ever, if there's ever another meeting where we talk about like, yes. That, just let me know. Great. Um, I'm sorry, I saw Natalia's hand up for a minute, and then we'll go to Kim B. But Nat unless Natalia you didn't have anything, sorry, I don't want to put you on the spot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I just okay. wanted to uh, chime in a little bit on that front of uh, the demographic information. And I know that's something we talk a little bit about uh, on the resident side of things, but mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the big approaches that we're kind of taking philosophically uh, on this development is that we want to enable you guys to do your work better, right? So uh, as much as possible, we do want to give you guys the tools to do those things, because I don't want you emailing me about those things, and I don't want you emailing Marissa necessarily. Like, uh, So that is something very much so that we are considering as we approach uh, this redesign. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because by the time if you if your address has changed by the time you send an email to one of us to let us know what the new address is you could have just <laughs> entered it to yourself and uh and then the ad admin office just sees it in real time that there's an update so okay yes can be um basically just uh, you bring up a good point eric in regards to the kind of the um the dashboard having the update in terms of e-field notes and trainings and that kind of thing um, just because on, on our end, we do track the e-field note uh, numbers for the residents. Um, I don't think that if, I think that again, it's, it's um, it would be good to have kind of a snapshot of where you're at, how many e-field notes are pending or, or first thing instead of having to search and click six times to get where you need to be. Um, it'd be good to have a dashboard just when you go in, here are your pending tasks, here's, you know, just so you're not, they're not searching for stuff mm -hmm. because on our end, then we, the residents kind of get penalized in a sense because they're not, the the e-field notes are being shared, um, but sometimes they're not signed off. And so you have X amount of outstanding ones. So we don't want to penalize the, the residents for, for kind of doing their job. But then on the other hand, we're also having issues with preceptors being able to log on to femoral if they're not kind of internal users. So I've been helping them on that front. So just to have kind of a snapshot at the beginning would be really good. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Okay. So let's see where we left off. Go back in this order. Okay. So once you've found your faculty member, um, you come to their profile page. And again, this is the kind of information we're capturing today. Um, CPS no, CPSO numbers, employee numbers. Again, they, it doesn't seem like these are consistently filled out. And so, again, I'm just trying to highlight any areas if they're not needed or if something else needs to change, then let us know. Yes, Eric? Again, I, I think one of the challenges people have as, as a doctor is, is seeing themselves as a member of the university. Um, and so I think, you know, I, I go to apply for a, a CPD office course and the first thing they ask me is my employee number. And I, and I think like, I didn't even know I had an employee number. Like, <laughs> I, like, and so having that sort of data here, I think is going to make it helpful. Like it's going to make it useful, uh, for people. So the more that this becomes a place that people would go to help them do their job, mm -hmm. I think the more, you know, the, the information will be useful. It'll be populated, but. If that's the kind of thing I had to enter, I don't, you know, I, I know I've got it stored on my phone somewhere because it's the numbers, you know, that questions come up more than once. Mm -hmm. uh, the teaching site is useful. I, I, what I was going to with the address of the teaching site, it, it, I just love the idea. We've started running reports on people so we can figure out like how much engagement, how far are people being drawn into our events 
Mm-hmm. And so if we have, we, you know, it's not just the site, but if we actually know the office, because sometimes it might say community, uh, but it's nice to know kind of where they are or, you know, we can, we can calculate, you know, we can run reports that, for example, that would tell us the degree that, uh, you know, people are driving. So li- linking it back, like we talked about um, the, the carbon impact of things, like how, how, you know, by doing it this way, you know, how did, how did we uh, change the carbon uh, footprint of our event and stuff? So I know that's sort of down the road, but if we don't mm-hmm. talk about even getting the data in, then we would never be able to run the report later. Right, right. Okay. Uh, sorry, Kimby, is that a new hand? Sorry. Um, yeah, I was just, I, I don't think um, I typically use the, like Eric was saying, the CPS, CPS, or sorry, I think you were saying the CPSO number, the employee number, external resource. I don't know if I see that frequently or not. Um, so there's just certain things that I don't know. Like, do we want to make it mandatory to save it or so that it's standard across the board? And and I do find that we're, and this is, I don't know if this is pertinent or not, but we are like using half of the profile screen and the other half is nothing. And then we've got the contact information underneath. So it'd be nice to have just one profile contact with all the information in yeah. So the, the blank that space is. right now <laughs> is just because the, the way this was developed, it's an c- exact replica of the resident profile, whether it was necessary or not. And so on the resident profile, there'd be a picture of the resident here. Gotcha. Faculty. Okay. Yeah. That's All right. And and in terms of the um, the employee numbers, that information is not shared with us either by the faculty. So we can't, um, that would be information that we would have to sort of run after, right, Andrea? That's not um, something that we have access to easily. That's something that, you know, the faculty member down the road would have to, once we have a different kind of system, then they could add that in because they're, they don't share that information with us. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that come in with their welcome letter? It does, but Uh, that's confidential. And we, that's confidential. We don't, we're not, yeah. So we can't really put that unless they give us permission. I would yeah. be skeptical of putting that into our own database. I yeah. mean, it would be. It, it would is be there now. A lot of them have their uh, their employee numbers there. That's where I usually get them. It's one of those things, Louise. That's so inconsistent, though. Like I've never yeah. seen a employee number ever because it's really not my personal. You know, it's not the only thing that I put in when I start a new profile to actually make sure that they're in our um, database as an active faculty who has an appointment um, is their date of birth. That's the only thing that I really have that I've been updating. Yeah. And, and then I update obviously the academic appointment page. Um, but the but I don't put in any of their CPSO info. No, or no, their anything, anything that's really pertaining to, to their profile outside of the department, I don't, I don't touch. Is, is it okay? Wait. Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yes, and we've been told not to um, ask for their employee numbers unless, you know, they request it. So I know we've, we've, yes. Is it a fair assumption, though, that like from the faculty member's perspective, that anything that they put in here would be shared back at least with us, the central admin staff? Or, I mean, because if we leave it as the the field that's there, but it's not mandatory to complete, but if you've chosen to fill it out, then yeah, we know it. So yes, you can leave it there. You don't have to make it mandatory. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Eric? Uh, My apologies. I think Kim had her hand up. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kim. I I just wanted to know if it was possible to add in um, community as the hospital affiliation so that we have our kind of core groups. Mm -hmm. Um, because when we try and generate reports, um, we tend to not be able, we have Mm -hmm. to kind of do some digging and, and it just makes things quite a bit longer on, on our ends just to generate reports. Also link that with the residents that we can tag them as community and have it more streamlined. Cause I think you have to uncheck certain things in their profile, in the report to find them. So this would be a really good way to just make sure that we can generate that quickly. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, very doable. Thank you. Yes, Eric. I need to unmute you. There you go. 
Uh, sorry, I, I will just, <laughs> I, I agree with what was just said. I'll just stop talking. I, yeah, oh, no. <laughs> Don't you dare. Okay. Um, for, some, for some reason, I had a hard time finding the mute button. Like it, it takes one, there's one person in every meeting, right? We've been doing this for years and it's like, seriously. No, I, I think that that's, I think that's really, really good. I think your question a, a couple of a minutes ago was like, who's going to have access to this? And I think what I was going to say is I don't like this is this sort of became like a departmental filing, a file folder. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was sort of like, you know, because we, we like I'm sitting in my office looking at a, a filing cabinet and we used to have like a filing cabinet where we just would pull out a file. And, and I think the intention was that this would kind of take over from that, that it would kind of be like your file. So I don't think anybody would be upset if the university kept track of our university number. Like it, it yeah. seems like one of those things that universities should probably keep track of and and we're the agents for the university in this case. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're right though, it does have to be made clear who's going to have access to this because when we did the when we did the original one for residents, we had a long debate about this, but in actual fact, we held it at a curriculum retreat and then people just said, no, it's okay. If you're a preceptor, you can see any residents uh, field notes and people were like, okay. And that, and that kind of surprised me that people were okay with that, but it was like, it's, yeah. And it's actually worked pretty well because as a supervisor across the program, you can run reports, you can compare things, you can pull stuff up. But I think for this, we'd have to make clear that it's the admin staff can all see it. Um, okay. You know, that your the, the senior leadership probably can see it or people on those like it, it, specific committees, like the DTPC, mm -hmm. if you're on that committee or if you're on, you know, I, I think it's the kind of thing where that would be the people who would be needing to see it. Right, right. And then if there were certain sections, let's say, I don't know, promotions related, if that's supposed to be private just for the DTPC or uh, chair, then we can define those permission levels um, so that there's just yeah. super users. If you're on one of those committees where you would know that anyway, then you mm -hmm. should be able to have access to it. And then, yeah. yeah. So you could see your own and you could see the ones if you're a leader who's responsible for people because a lot of this comes down to well, like ultimately we'll probably want to do stuff like performance reviews like what i would love to see us have is like a job description and ultimately this sort of starts to reflect what's in our job description so like your job description says you should do participate in sues and you should you know have mm -hmm. learners and you should and so this would sort of reflect your job description. And then when you have the, re, you know, doing whoever, you know, sets up the performance reviews for the chair would probably like it if we could just, you know, run a report and say, this is the kind of stuff you participated in. Oh, you've been here for five years and you've never been to an orientation. Like, eh, let's put that on the list of things to do for the next year. How are you doing with those CPD credits? Yeah. Okay, good. So, okay. Like the person could even come to their, you know, even maybe fill out some of this stuff ahead of time, make sure their profile is complete and everything before they even have their performance review. I know that sounds a bit aspirational. So again, I, I'm just going to, oh, look, there's the mute button. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on. So then, yes, obviously the emails and phone numbers and clinic addresses kind of stay the same. Uh, designations, uh, something you guys complete on a regular basis? No? No? I'm seeing a lot of no's, so we can remove that. Yeah. But it depends sure. how you're going to use it, okay. right? Yeah. Like I, I would say, Oop. if we don't use it, but but again, at the end of the day, if we're going to have people now putting in their own designations, it would be nice to know who in our department is a, a what you know. Like it, right now, nobody types it in because it's being we're asking administrators to do it. But if you're asking the faculty member as part of you know joining um, the faculty. Just... Yeah. And again, it doesn't have to be mandatory, I suppose. If people want to fill it out, then they do. Um, okay, that can be on there. And then teams and as a practice focus, that sounds like it might also be the same as those areas of interest that we were talking about earlier. So that could possibly be where people select for themselves what they are interested in. Any other comments on this part of the profile page? Um, I just put something in the chat in regards to tagging um, profiles that are unit PDs or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, we do the similar something similar with the chief residents. Yes. Um, it's just a little checkbox and off we go. So again, it's just to be able to generate a quick list if we need it. Yes. Um, if there's any changes too. Um, yeah. 
yeah, that's a great idea. That way, I mean, even our comms person that has to update the website can see who the unit directors are at each spot um, as people change or leave positions. That, that would be very helpful. Just because it makes the all the information, like the key information accessible to everyone. So yeah. that we know, okay, oh, this person has changed and they can generate the list pretty much anytime instead of waiting for an email or, yeah. Good, good. Sorry, I don't know why my camera turned off there for a second. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you, guys. Let's go on uh, to the roles and responsibilities page. I myself have never truly come to this part of the profile before, but I'm sure it is very useful to somebody on the line. <laughs> so any comments on this page? I have a quick comment. Yeah. When I was, when I was in the PG role, like in Kim's position or staff's position, um, I knew that you had to tick off a couple things in this in this um, like yes. sort of tab to be able to link it to access to 145 or to even pull it into some type of report. Um, so I know that there are some links. I just, I kind of forget what those are and, but it would be, it would be to activate something on the preceptor end of it. So I think it might be that postgrad teaching, you have to take that off and a primary preceptor, that's to activate a specific thing that would be, that would say, okay, they are linked to a resident. And then I think you would see it in, in a pull up in a report, but I don't understand the intricacies of how some of this stuff gets captured or not into reports. So that's a whole okay. other, I think, beast, but okay. very, very, I don't really, I don't really go into this page myself. And just to kind of um, add on to that, I don't think I've ever used this. So if that's something that Andrea was doing in the past, I'm definitely not doing it now. Um, so it'd be good once we have this kind of re, um, rejigged to, to have kind of a breakdown as to d understanding the link between, okay, when I click this, I like it links up somehow because I, yeah, I wasn't aware that, that um, certain things had to be checked off on, on this portion okay. of, uh, of the profile. Um, not sure if any of you are aware, I can always ask Sylvia offline, but to be an FMRSP supervisor, do you have to be a primary preceptor? Can it just be any faculty member assigned to a project? I don't know if there's anything beyond why that someone would need to be checked. Yes, Eric. Yeah, so, so this is what I was talking about, like, the vision for this was the idea that you, when you have your, your performance review, you say, these are the kinds of things I do for DFM. And, and actually, I'll be honest, like many faculty are kind of a little surprised that they ask questions like, well, can you give me a list of the things I've done for DFM? And then we, none of us really seem to be able to have a way of keeping track of what they do. So I think that, the, again, they should be responsible. I don't think any administrator okay. should be responsible for putting this in. I think that when you're going for the performance review, you, you could literally say, yes, I'm a research. But what, if I was going to be a research supervisor, I would click on that. And then I, you should be able to have a box where you can fill in who and what and how many, because I might be a research supervisor for three different people. And then that would generate a report that says, well, you, you know, this year you're a research supervisor for this person. And, and so a lot of this could be free text. And mm -hmm. then, um, you know, because I think it's, it's really meant to be that the faculty member fills this out and it's evidence of what they're doing for DFM, but I, I would cringe if, if this was up to an administrator to have to mm -hmm. fill out. Like, Yeah, well, and I think part of what, what Andrea was talking about, what makes me cringe a bit is that she's right. Like if you don't tick this box, there's other parts of Femoral that you don't get access to or that doesn't kind of sync with the reporting features. And so there are times when, yeah, the, right now the administrator does have to make sure certain areas are ticked off, but we're trying to move away from that in Femoral 2.0. Um, so that's, uh, okay. So this whole page could kind of potentially be reworked. Um, if, okay. We can come back to this if when we have. And I would questions. do in the um, in the profile maybe instead of if they are post grad teaching primary preceptor that's or FMRSP supervisor that's information I'd put in the profile section and not in a separate just to have again your 
your profile being as complete as possible for, for stuff like that. Okay. If, if possible. Okay. Um, I'm probably going to just skip because I know the finance team is on the line and I know we've got 20 minutes left. So I want to just make sure I get to their part of this as well. Um, Victoria and Gaspard. So this is, we have um, under the preceptors tab right now, we have this section where we add financial invoices and then there's specific, specific reports that get pull, pulled here. Um, is, is this something you guys actively use? Um, actually in this part, we, uh, um, so for now we do not use because most likely when they submit the invoice, they will send directly by email. And then also the unit coordinator will submit it uh, to finance DFM as well. And, uh, also I, but I think it's a great idea to adding on the financial invoice, uh, function on the femoral 2.0, because now if the preceptor are able to assess the femoral, they can manage their profile and they can submit their invoices directly over there. And once that's complete, uh, Kim will receive the notification and she will review on that. I, and also responded to the CPSO. I think we could keep that field because for the finance part, when we submit the reports on um, which preceptor we pay, we need to provide the CPSO information. Okay. okay. So is it kind of like the residents that get like a stipend amount and they want to track how much money they have left in those special educational funds? Is it something similar this page is for? Like, yes, okay, thanks, Victoria. <laughs> See that thumbs up. All right. Um, any other kind of financial components, Victoria Gaspard, in terms of what you are not able to achieve maybe in Business Central, but would like to see in Femoral? Uh, and also another thing would be the tax. So for the preceptor, if they need a T4A, mm -hmm. they need to submit the information on their C number. So we probably need mm -hmm. some security so that only the preceptor and certain finance people can see their scene. So yeah. when we pull off their information, so the other people cannot see their scene number directly on there. Yeah, I think that one we have in the past been told by the university not to track in any kind of systems or spreadsheets. So I don't know, that might be one we have to kind of investigate. Um, uh, yeah. Will the preceptors be able to add their direct deposit on the femoral or? They could potentially, yeah. I mean, if that's okay. easier. Yeah. That's... But again, I just want to make sure that'll be something like if we kind of investigate further offline, make sure we're not storing. I mean, but you guys are asking for that stuff now anyway. So you're storing it where now on the P drive? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if that was something, instead of an email, it just gets populated by the faculty member here. That, that would be helpful. I just okay. have something that might be um, just in terms of remediation payments that are done, but that might be good to have kind of um, just so that the unit coordinators could potentially submit it through femoral. Um, okay. So instead, and maybe just tagging the people that need to be aware and processing it that way. And then on the flip side that the preceptor can then go check and see, I don't think I got paid for that session. Let me just go and check and they can see again, tracking that way. Um, Cause okay. typically we then get an email being, you know, did I receive it? No. Okay. Then I have to follow up with Victoria or somebody at, at finance. And I think it would just, Again, the responsibility can be kind of shared on, on that mm -hmm. front instead of mm -hmm. just um, on our end, so. Hey, Marissa, the other thing I'm thinking about right now is that we're trying to keep track of anyone who's actually been granted funding through the department. So that might be something that we want to track again through this um, mm -hmm. because I know, you know, we don't want people tapping into too many things at one time. 
Yeah, so I was just going to ask you, what do you mean about what kind of funding? So are we like, because I can only think in project world. So are we talking about like the Denise Lewis, she won any campus grant, we mark her as receiving funding? Or is it? Yeah, I think more just financial support through grants or through our ALSF fund or through prime grants, for example, anything that sort of we're, I think, paying out to faculty would be something that we should probably track. Okay. Mm, and the locum fund as well, right, Andrea? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Yep. And that too would then like be kind of a shared responsibility between like mm -hmm. I would be aware of the camp e campus grants, research would be aware of kind of prime grants, I'd imagine. And then you guys are the other. Um, I'm just wondering who populates that the faculty member or one of us or is it, it would shared? I think probably it would be it would be finance as well because mm -hmm. Victoria is aware of the um, the locum and the ALSF right Victoria you get all of those from us uh, yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay this is great all right, let's go back then maybe to, we talked about this part of the academic appointment status. Rankings we discussed briefly at the beginning with Louise. Um, yeah, and then how are you finding this box here, Lucia? Because I know these were relatively oh, new I, additions. Yes, yeah, we use that it. One works. Okay. We use it, yes. And if that area, text box. yes. And maybe, you know, we could just, um, I mean, this is just the first meeting and I'm sure we'll have right, more right. meetings, but oh, yes. <laughs> we can sort of, you know, change the the wording that align and then align it more with, you know, the, you know, the academic area of focus and, you know, it'd be great down the road if we could actually have their um, academic plans in there and um, any other documentation. So yes, definitely. The primary appointment and the cross appointment, those are mm -hmm. those are very important fields that we do update. And site visits, I bet that's kind of like what Eric's been getting at, kind of tracking the engagement of what kind of events or is Aaron no. mistaken? Okay. This so the site visit, um, Andre, you can probably speak to this from your former role or yeah, the site visit, um, well, I, I think it was more of a community-based like mm -hmm. position that it was D Dr. Tobin in the role at one point, but we were trying to track who in the community was getting um, was getting a site visit to when they were taking learners. It was a component of them getting learners was to have a site visit done by by one of our, you know, by 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 Dr. Tobin or anyone who was in that role. So we were using this as just a way of tracking that who did the site visit um, when it was done. It's supposed to be done. I think it's an accreditation standard every, you know, initially when you're taking learners, if you haven't had them before, and then you have to do it every couple of years if you're in like the rural community um, setting. So I don't know. Is that, being, is that being used now, Kim? Do you know if um, you don't know if <laughs> Stefan is? I, I is don't this know. Would be, yeah, this would be under Stefan if he's using it to. Yeah, um, I was updating it for a little bit when I was in that role. So I was using it, but it be, it was only something that sort of came to my attention that needed to be updated in this database, you know, sort of um, oh, here and <laughs> just sort of like, mm -hmm. hey, make sure you're updating that the database. And I was like, okay, so I think that, you know, it doesn't, it, it definitely is not a comprehensive look at like the site visits that have been done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it makes sense to keep it in. I think it makes sense to keep it as part of that. Yeah, and I'm sorry if this is probably a Stefan question then, but like, can does the admin staff, are they always aware when site visits happen or no, this should be something that the faculty member fills out? Steph Stefan, whoever is the community coordinator would know. Would know, okay. Yes. Okay. Because he's also helping to plan, to plan those. Um, yeah, he and, schedules them, right. Yeah, and I'm just thinking it might not be a bad idea if we keep this to potentially have a template. So he just reminds and it's an email that's sent out with the, the date, the time, is it vir I'm virtual or what have you. Um, it might 
it yeah it might might be an option uh, if we want to go that route instead of it being a separate email okay and then that brings us to the human resources page and here I think is where we're, we've seen some attempts, I guess, at talent management and performance reviews. But again, I don't know if this is actively used or- if It, it is not, up. as far as okay. I know, it's not used at all. I don't think, I personally have not used it ever. Yeah. I don't think Andrea has or Louise, this doesn't, this doesn't get filled out. So we would yeah. have to redo this entire page. Okay, so we can have those kinds of sessions later. Yeah on this. Okay. Um, let's make sure I'm not missing anything else. Okay. And then of course, reporting features on anything that the, the database captures, we could potentially pull a report on those. Um, again, so, I think we, yeah, go ahead. So the only thing I would like to add to this would be maybe doing a search by academic area of focus because I think that's something okay. that would, um, what do you think, Andrea? That would be something, you know, just and, and for Eric too, for all of us, just to know, you know, who is interested in this and this, if we're looking for people to do some teaching or writing or, or anything like that. So just adding, you know, we would have to be very diligent about uh, moving forward, about um, completing that field, you know, and adding the area of focus and then being able to pull a report on that. Just because when we need teachers or we're you know, organizing um, committees or anything like that, we always need that information. Well, who's interested in global health or who's interested in inner city or who's, who, who, how many people do we have who are interested, who have shown interest in indigenous health and things like that. So mm -hmm. I think that definitely needs to be captured here. Yeah. I think that one thing that I get nervous about with the reporting is that when I was looking at the stats for the annual report, I was looking at 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. And even when I said that I wanted to only look at active people at the, um, you know, I, I had specific criteria in mind, it gave me a report for, with 500 people. So then it's mm -hmm. how am I expected to go through that if I didn't have any sort of historical knowledge of the department to clean up a report that of that magnitude to then sort of say, okay, here are our numbers. Like you can't feel confident about it um, at all, even for somebody who's been working at the department for a long time. So I think the reporting structure is actually, it shouldn't, it needs to be totally cleaned up and, mm -hmm. and it needs to be, um, because I'm getting my information from the faculty of medicine. Yeah. Right. So and then I went through there and sort of compared. And even when I look at for I know who full professors are because we don't have we have 20, let's just say. So I, I can clearly go through that report and clean it up. But it's not an easy it's not an easy thing. And I think that that's where that's where, you know, if we want to be accurate and, and Dr. Liddy and like our, you know, if we want to pull some accurate reports, um, this needs to go. <laughs> yeah. It does. No. I, I will echo that this the whole reporting system is is it's not working the external resource. Yes, no, the active user. I mean, we just need to simplify it. Mm -hmm. Because we want to be, you know, really capturing our active faculty members. That's what we really are always interested in. So and we just get this dump of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of names that we, we don't know what to do with. And we're not even sure, you know, people are on there who have never had a faculty appointment and maybe just needed to access something and they were added on. And now they're, we're just, we just have them in the, um, in the database. So yes, so we definitely need to look at this. This, is, yeah. this will be, this yeah, will be a huge task moving forward. Indeed. And I think there's an element not to point fingers or anything, but it's like, I think that's where, you know, where we were talking about, oh, if you didn't tick, tick that box, something didn't happen over there. I think that's part of what needs to be cleaned up in the back end that we don't even see because it's like garbage in, garbage out. So yeah. like if we don't, if we've missed a tick box and that impacts the report or we added a new field on the human resources page, but it didn't get reflected on the profile page, then yeah, yeah, it just gets messy. And I, I've seen that reporting issue across the database, whether it's e-field notes, residents, or preceptor information that we're trying to pull. 
it's always debatable whether it's accurate information <laughs> we're pulling. So yeah, we will make pay careful attention to all. Kendra, that. Kendra, are you going to write that? I think Kendra <laughs> just volunteered. <laughs> the mic is on, right? <laughs> Kendra. <laughs> did I say that? <laughs> yes, you did. Okay. It's been recorded. You okay. did say that. It's right, in the right. chat now. Yes. I'm controlling the recording. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, honestly, I think that we have covered just about it. Again, so discussion fields, existing fields we've discussed, personalization. Yeah, that's going to be a key component, I think, across the database. Um, uh, data privacy. And then any other suggestions or relevant changes you think we haven't covered yet today? I know we only have a few minutes, but this is just session one on this. So <laughs> we can always try another day. Um, um Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I cut someone yeah. off. No, 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 Kim. I'm just, I mean, I'm not <laughs> saying anything important. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just saying, um, I was just saying, I was just thinking that in terms of the features that should be linked, I really think, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself multiple times, but if we can have it so that the, the supervising preceptor and the resident be like blaringly obvious together yeah. that would make my life so much easier <laughs> yeah. so yeah. things yeah. like that and I really do think that if we are asking preceptors and residents to fill out e-field notes I really think that it would be useful to have that dashboard that feature of and it kind of goes both ways right like oh I shared this e-field note the preceptor, the preceptor hasn't filled it out or vice versa um that we make it easier um kind of the 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 uh, snapshot uh, at the beginning you were saying of the welcome page that they have um and how to um get help as well because i think it's a totally separate tab somewhere um i don't even think i've looked into it but to make it more um user friendly on that front Mm -hmm. And this is just selfishly on my end. And I think Marissa, you can agree with me on that for the e-field notes. I, I was going to say, are you this. talking about that e-field <laughs> notes email address where all questions end up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll become much clearer. Like I'm hoping that with all the improvements made across, like everyone here is going to start using it more and more efficiently. And so it'll just become clear of um, who we reach out to, but oh. Excuse me, I've just changed all the pages. There we go. Okay, so next steps, a few things. We've got, of course, the ongoing reminder about renaming this portal if we want to. And although we have received some suggestions that say just keep it to avoid confusion, um, but let us know. We, we are actively monitoring this. If you have any suggestions, um, we'll, we'll circulate the options for kind of a final vote um, so we can actually start calling for moral 2.0, perhaps something different. <laughs> um, and then of course we've got, we need some time on our end just to make sure we're capturing all the requirements um, properly. And then we circulate it to the executive committees like Eric and Lena and Ned and Kim and uh, Jeff and Claire and make sure that we are prioritizing um, what must be in place versus what can be done in future phases versus what are really just kind of nice to have so that um, and we kind of run that all by the development team too, to make sure that things are achievable by our, our first deadline. Um, and then of course, hopefully this is just an evergreen project that we just keep continuing to improve on. And, <laughs> yes. and so if there aren't any other questions, that is the end of my part of the presentation. 